the Shark Deck. Hey, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news late night on strike because of the Reuters. So we have late bots who said, hey, did you see King Charles was on American Idol? Yeah, it's like the British invasion. But instead of the Beatles, we got a balding middle aged monarch. King Charles on American Idol is like if Queen Elizabeth decided to go on the Kardashians. It's just weird. Now, that last one's not really a joke, but I could see Kimmel saying that. I've been tweaking the late bot and telling it to get more sarcastic, more Letterman. So we'll see what it spits out in the upcoming days and perhaps months. Over the weekend, I power washed and I was looking for a late bot topic. So I threw in power washing and it spit this out. Hey, I saw a power washing company slogan that said, we'll blast away any dirt. Apparently, they never met my ex. (laughs) I like that one so much. I tried power washing my car, but I ended up stripping the paint off. Now it looks like a middle-aged man going through a midlife crisis. I could see Kimmel with that, too. I saw a power washing company with the slogan, we'll make it look like new. Yeah, if your definition of new is missing a few shingles and covered in dirt. Hannah Gadsby's new special is out today on Netflix. It's called Something Special. I will discuss that in the second half of the podcast if you don't want to be spoiled. Meanwhile, Dave Chappelle has announced 15 more summer comedy shows in Yellow Springs, Ohio. I love looking at all the small town legalese stuff that goes on. The Board of Zoning met and they gave Dave approval by a vote of four to nothing. Steve Wirig is the owner of the Wirig Pavilion, a rural property in Yellow Springs where Dave Chappelle has performed cornfield shows. The past three summers, guests have included Ollie Wong, Chris Rock, Chelsea Handler, John Mayer, David Letterman, second mention of the day, John Stewart and more. According to the request, Mr. Chappelle and his team would like the opportunity to conduct a limited run of additional shows this summer between June 1st and October 8th to further highlight the success and national recognition of these events in our community. While Mr. Chappelle could be conducting shows at mass theaters around the world, he'd like to conduct this string of shows to further honor his community. Weirig said Chappelle draws crowds from all over the country and those diverse attendees shop local and lodge near the village. The shows also employ local law enforcement, security, food vendors, production crews and more. In the application, Weirig said it's a humorous respite in the open field surrounded by native Ohio woodlands. Patrons often cite the peacefulness of the surroundings and the chance for a good laugh as an experience that positively impacts their mental health. According to the permit, shows will be limited to 1,000 ticket holders and only 200 cars can be parked at the property. Shows will not be held on Sunday unless it's a holiday weekend and no more than three shows will be presented in a single week. Spoilers for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I'll give you a second here. If you want to hit 30 second skip, I'll do the story quick. All right. Hit skip. If you haven't, here it goes. You know who's in Guardians 3? Pete Davidson. Yes. The spoiler, Pete Davidson's character appears towards the end of the film. The Guardians release a bunch of animals from their cages. We see a vaguely humanoid blob of unsightly mutated matter. Flectic thanks his liberator as he makes his way off the spaceship. Flectic, voiced by Pete Davidson, rendered in CGI. The Lucille Ball Comedy Festival, uh, upstate Jamestown, New York, August 2nd through the 6th. They've announced the headliners. Gabe Iglesias and Taylor Tomlinson will be your headliners. That's pretty good. Meanwhile, the Impractical Jokers and Eric Andre are teaming up for a comedy cruise. This one next January, it'll go from Miami to the Bahamas and back. The cruise will feature stand-up comedy, live music, podcasts, exclusive panels, karaoke, and of course, nonstop warm weather shenanigans from port to port. Here are some of the events. Lip Sync Battle with Eric and the Jokers, Gong Show with Eric Andre, Live Space Monkeys Podcast, Beer Pong and Poker, and the Belly Flop Contest judged by Sal Valcano. That is awesome. Presale access available now if you want to sign up. Mark Marin spoke to KCRW and said, Lately, as I get older as a comic, and I realize I've been doing this most of my life, I really find myself sometimes just sitting at home and watching old comedy clips. I mean, really old, like Rodney Dangerfield, Buddy Hackett, Don Rickles. These were the guys when I was a kid. With my grandmother and my grandfather, I'd be sitting in their house and they'd be telling me about what they thought was funny. My grandmother loved Don Rickles, loved Buddy Hackett. My grandfather was more of a slapstick guy, but it really informed who I was. And when I was a little kid, probably 10 or 11, I'd watch comics on TV. I'd see Jackie Vernon. It must have been on Dean Martin's shows, and I thought he was the funniest guy in the world. To the point where my parents, and I must have been 11 or 12, they knew I loved this guy. They brought me to a nightclub at the Hilton in Albuquerque because Jackie Vernon was playing. I sat right up in front. I was the only kid in the place. They let my parents bring me in. I'm sitting there five feet from Jackie Vernon, this heavy set, sweaty guy. I thought it was genius. I thought it was hilarious. For some reason lately, I've been watching when I want to feel better, really reflect on what comedy used to be. 
took me a long time to appreciate this guy because I don't think as a kid I really registered Rodney Dangerfield all that much. But I love watching Rodney on Carson, the old stuff, because Rodney not doing well was the greatest thing in the world where he'd be like, are you sure this is the right mic? Hi, my name is TJ, and I host a daily radio show. I have a bunch of friends that join me for it every day, and believe it or not, we all still see hope in humanity. Are you one of these people, too? We want to hang out with you. Just search for The TJ Show on your favorite podcasting platform or join us at thetjshow.com. We would love to have you being hopeful about humanity with us. Here's a quick sample of what the show sounds like. Hey, welcome to The TJ As you can tell, you need to hear more of it. Search for The TJ Show, and we can't wait to meet you. Hannah Gadsby's new special is out on Netflix today. Spoilers coming up. Cracked, said Hannah is going about it all backwards. After all, their first special, Nanette, was the one where they quit comedy. Usually, quitting comes last. But resigning from the job wasn't the only thing inverted about Nanette. Gadsby used a comedy special to take comedy to task, pulling apart the very fabric of self-deprecating humor. They decided it's not humility, it's humiliation. Gatsby seems to be following the career trajectory of many of our biggest comedians, Robin Williams, George Carlin, Tig Notaro, Chris Rock, but doing it in reverse. Most comedy career arcs go something like this. Comedian breaks onto the scene with hilarious jokes, bits, and characters. Something gets in the way. The trials of success, personal tragedy, self-destructive behavior, and the routines take on a darker tone. Maybe the comedy becomes more contemplative and less punchline-driven, like with Nataro and Williams. Maybe the jokes get more pointed and political, like they did with Rock and Carlin. The comedy gets more honest as goofy exteriors are peeled away to reveal the tearful onion truths inside. The anger and despair that drove Nanette are gone, replaced with lines like, I do want to acknowledge that the world is ending, but the thing is, I don't think I can solve it. Not tonight, not in the time allocated, so I'm just going to ignore it. Instead, Hannah promises to give us an hour of feeling good. I've dragged you through a bit of my stuff over the years. It's time for some payoff. The Wall Street Journal wrote, My viewing companion remarked that Hannah Gatsby has gone soft. And it's not an inaccurate observation or a happy one. Among the things that made Nanette such a sensation was the way Gatsby, who uses they as a pronoun, operated as a biting social critic as well as a stand-up comic, even while disavowing stand-up comedy. They could also operate as a spoken word magician in Douglas, and I personally like Douglas better than Nanette. In Douglas, for instance, Gatsby told you what was going to happen, showed their cards up front, and you were still amazed when the Queen of Hearts popped out of the deck. It was performance art in many ways, but unlike much within that genre, both profound and profoundly entertaining, Gatsby opened something special with a feel-good show, because I owe you one, with the announcement that they've gotten married. It should be a warning shot. The source of full-blooded art is heartbreak, not happiness. Much of something special is devoted to wedded bliss, but Gatsby's feigned dismay at the fuss that straight people make about weddings? Gatsby says, I had no idea. The Wall Street Journal says, really? To pretend otherwise feels phony, which Gatsby has never been. The problems seem rooted in distrust of the material. Where Gatsby should be deadpan, the performer's anything but. An appreciative grin accompanies each gag line, not waiting for the expected laugh and thus extorting the audience into giving one up. Interesting review there. Not sure what to make of the last part. I, I'm reading it. I'm tempted to panic. But then I remember Bob Hope and Johnny Carson mugged for the camera and got a laugh all the time. So maybe it's not bad. I'll have to see it for myself. Hannah Gatsby, something special on Netflix. From the spinoff, eight shows you should see at the New Zealand International Comedy Festival. Let's skim through this quickly. Liv Parker shows called Werewolves, Vampires, and Harry Styles. That's a great name. Her debut hour promises to reveal her most intimate fangirl fantasies through a blend of sketch, clown, and stage challenge dance. Sounds like a good time. Janae Henry's show is called Crush Season. Expect infectious energy, endless flirting, and a big serve of social and political commentary buried beneath all the sweetness and smiles. Ruby Esther's show is called Ruby Esther Comedy Fester. Love it. She's goofy and introspective, tells vignettes about her family life, which can seem on the verge of meandering until she brings you into an ingeniously plotted conclusion. Samina Zera's show is called Immigranting. That's funny. The spinoff writes, Zamina Zira is a straight-up legend. Her show, Tea with Terrorists, had a run in Auckland. She knows when to stab the knife, where to twist it, and where to pull it out for maximum effect. Her new hour, Immigranting, sees her sharing more stories from her wildlife and her struggle to convince Immigration New Zealand that she is, in fact, a human. Wow, Ray O'Leary, everything funny all the time, always. Not quite sure what this show's about. There's a great picture of his dog, and I like this dog a lot. But they write, with his plain gray suit and slow, drawling delivery, it's confronting how assuredly O'Leary can deliver a punchline and get a big laugh. They have on their list Bobby Woods, If You Met My Mum, You'd Understand. Told you about that one on the Prolapse Cow yesterday. 
Kuratorowina. Ho-ha guy. The blurb promises a unique sense of humor that's silly, a little bit dorky, and a little bit effed up. And the final one on the spinoffs list, James Mustapik into the multimedia verse. Still harnessing the hilariously shoddy editing skills and the relentless obsession with New Zealand popular culture that he had way back in his YouTube days. It was Mustapik's deployment of a certain family member throughout the show that really brought the house down. I'm not going to say anything more. You've just got to see it. So, all right. He's at uh, the Basement Theater in Auckland, May 10th to the 13th. So you better get on a plane. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, I am Mark Francis, host of a daily podcast about the British royal family called Palace Intrigue. Did you see what Meghan Markle did in her latest documentary? Or what Prince Harry said in his new book? Well, the kings and queens and princes and princesses are ready to explode. Andrew is ready to implode. Royal sources are jumping at the bit. The in-laws just can't stop. The UK tabloids are about to burst. Americans can't get enough. The kids can't get any cuter. The press can't get any uglier. And Wills and Kate? Well, they're just wonderful. Get your daily dose of gossip and news from the world's most royal family. Follow Palace Intrigue on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your shows.